uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to the tutorials of week two. Uh, we have already discussed earlier in the week the different ways of collecting data and how APIs can be used for data collection. Today, we're going to specifically talk about how to use Twitter API and Reddit API in details. Okay. Uh, just to go back and start with a simple introduction of what is Twitter? As you all are aware about, Twitter is a microblogging social website where people can write tweets which are up to 280 characters and can have media attached to them. This is what a typical tweet would look like, where you can see information about who tweeted it, their display picture, some text, uh, there can be optional media, and then there would be information about who liked it, replied to it, tweeted it stuff like that. Uh, uh, essentially, what somebody can do is they can write a tweet, they can retweet it, reply, you can reply to a tweet and mention other people in a tweet and add hashtags which are uh, topic categories of what a tweet is. All this information can be collected via use of Twitter API. The theoretical details of them which have been discussed already in the lectures. Uh, today, we're going to talk about once you have access to a Twitter API using the method which was taught in the lecture, how can you actually start using it in code. To start with, uh, you would need uh, your Twitter developer apps consumer key, uh, customer key, consumer secret, access token and access token secret. Okay. Uh, the method of creating them was also discussed in the previous lecture. Uh, there are also rate limits to this Twitter uh, API which have been discussed in past. Uh, ensure when you are writing any code that this code sticks with the API rate limits. Otherwise, uh, there is a chance of your uh, access being terminated. Okay. And finally, uh, even though the Twitter API is really helpful and vast, um, to be able to use it in Python, there is this very handy library called Tweepy, uh, which is essentially a Python wrapper around uh, the official Twitter API. Uh, all our work today would be based around this Tweepy. You can access the documentation of it from docs.tweepy.org. It's a very well wrote um, documentation and makes handling Twitter API uh, very easy inside Python code rather than writing everything manually. Uh, so, to start with, uh, you would want to install Tweepy. Uh, you would want to install Tweepy, which can be just done by pip install Tweepy, and then uh, import Tweepy. And you would start with authentication. For authenticating, uh, you would need your consumer keys and secret keys and access tokens. Uh, one classic mistake which people do there is because this is sensitive information. Uh, what happens is people would put their keys here somewhere in text and then eventually this code would be pushed to GitHub or would be, ma would be made public through open source and these keys would also be made public with it, uh, which can cause a lot of trouble to people if they get hands into a, a bad actor. So be very careful that this should not be handed above. There are multiple ways of protecting it. One of the easiest ways of protecting it is that instead of having all your keys in the main code, have a separate file called keys.py like I have here. Uh, I'm going to show you a dummy file uh, which it essentially has four, it's a Python file with four variables and the actual values of your keys. Uh, this is a dummy file so my keys don't get exposed. But uh, have a file like this, name it something, keys.py seems to be a very good name and add these keys.py to your git ignore uh, first day when you start the project. So there is no chance of these this file being pushed to github and you're safe. And then inside all your python code you can just import from keys import all the variables in keys.py and all the variable values would come here but the probability of them being sent to github becomes almost zero as long as you ensure that keys.py is added to your git ignore too. Okay. Uh, with that out of the picture, we import our keys information, we import tweepy and 
then we would start by doing our authentication with Twitter. Think of authentication like it's just like when you log in into Twitter in web or app. This is the exact same process, but for your API. So Twitter has given you some keys before you can start exchanging data with the Twitter API. You need to tell them, okay, this is the user I am. This is the app access uh, which I'm going to use. And this is the kind of access you should provide this session, which is based on the access token. Uh, so this is just like a login process, but in code. Uh, so Tweepy has a OAuth handler. Uh, where you give your consumer keys and consumer secret. And once you have authentication done, this is the line which would take care of your authentication. Once this authentication session has been done, you would set access to that authentication session that is it read access, write access or both uh, using the access tokens. And once that is done, uh, you can pass this auth object to your API object in itself and you would have a running instance of API object then which you can be used for collecting data. Uh, you can generally just copy paste this code and use it in any format you want. Okay, So we see authentication successful. If there's something like that, uh, the API object would not be formed and then you can mark it as authentication failed. Uh, however, in this case, we were able to authenticate. Nice. So now that we have authenticated, let's do one of the simplest thing, which is let's try to get a tweet. Uh, so tweet on Twitter are marked as uh, marked using these unique IDs. Every tweet has a unique ID, uh, which is able to distinguish every tweet from another. And the simplest way you can get access uh, information about a tweet is by giving the API this tweet ID. How you get this tweet ID is that if you go to Twitter, um, and pull up uh, and you pull up any tweet. Uh, if you go to the URL of that tweet, uh, you would see that there is a unique ID present in the URL. This is the unique ID which we have been talking about. Okay, So given this unique ID, um, you can is, uh, simply just called API has this method called get status. Uh, get status, uh, uh, is essentially that given an ID, it would download all the information related to that specific tweet. Uh, so we specifically run this. When I run this command, what happened is, as you can see, it took a tad bit longer to run because uh, the API object called the Twitter API servers, uh, asked them to give me all the information about this specific tweet ID and the information got back to us. So as you can see, if I look at the type of this object, it's essentially a status object. A status in the API language is just one post or one status. And you can, the easiest way to access all this information generally is to access it in form of JSON. That is the most readable. And uh, if you see this, this is all the information we get when we call for a tweet. Uh, let's just go over this tweet object, but because this is going to be the bread and butter of when you get any data from a Twitter API, it would always come in this form. Uh, so let's try to understand what are the different fields present here. Uh, all this information is also pre present in the 2EP documentation and Twitter official documentation too. So we start with created at, which uh, gives us a full uh, date and time of when this tweet was created. Uh, uh, strictly speaking, this time is always the UTC time. Uh, it is not the India standard time or any other time zone because uh, all the API time information which you get from Twitter API would always be UTC. So let's say if you want to make a plot where you want to see time based on India, you would have to convert all of this into UTC 5. Uh, hours and 30 minutes plus uh, because that's what the Indian time zone is. By default, everything is UTC time. Uh, so you would have created, you would have the ID information both as an integer and as a string. Uh, Twitter IDs are always integer, but the API would return you a string format also because sometimes it's easier to handle depending on what kind of task you're trying to do. And then it would have the text of the tweet itself. As you can see, uh, this is not the complete 
text. This is a truncated version of the text and then it just gives us the link to the full version. Uh, this happens when you call the API by default. How to get the full text of this tweet uh, we'll talk in the later tutorial. Okay. Uh, and here is a flag called truncated which also tells you that is the text truncated or not. So in this case as you can see it's true which is this text is truncated. However let's say if uh, in a case the tweet was smaller than this and it would not have been truncated uh, then it would be marked as false. Uh, other than that you get uh, a nested object of entities. Entities would generally have information about all the hashtags used. So as you can see there has been uh, hashtags Delhi, Gandhinagar, Gwalior, Mumbai, all that here. So you would see the text of the hashtag and the string indexes of from which index to which index this text was spanned. Okay. Uh, it would have list of all the user mentions which are in the tweet. In this, this tweet does not have any user mention, so it doesn't have it. But otherwise, there would have been all the Twitter IDs of all the people who have been mentioned, and all the URLs which are present in the tweet also. Uh, similarly, it would have a lot of meta information about this tweet also. So, for example, was this tweet a reply to somebody. This was a standalone tweet, so all of this is none. But let's say this uh, tweet was made in reply to somebody's tweet, uh, then there would be status ID of the original tweet uh, to which it was a reply for. It would have the user information of that uh, whatever tweet this was a reply to, who was the user who made that original tweet. Uh, they would have information existing about that user in these four, five specific fields. Okay. Then there would also be detailed information about the user who made this specific tweet. So just like every tweet has a unique ID, every user has a unique ID which is also numeric. Uh, you see this is the unique ID for uh, Professor PK. Uh, you would have the name, you would have the screen name. Screen name is also what is popularly known as the handle on Twitter which is you see the at the rate something thing. So for PK's ID it's at the rate pawn guru. So that is the screen name. Uh, location if they have disclosed uh, their ID description, uh, ID description URL to their profile. Uh, again if their description has some URLs present in them uh, or they have some URLs attached to their profile so you can attach URL to your website uh, or something like that, that would be present uh, in the entities. Uh, and then uh, meta information about that user. So for example, number of followers, number of friends they have, uh, when was the profile created, how many favorites they have done in their lifetime, uh, which time zone they live in, if they have made it, uh, if they have marked it in profile, in this case it's not marked, is it geo enabled, which means that is the profile has some geographic information of where it comes from. Uh, and then it would have information about uh, what is the profile picture? So it would have linked to somebody's profile pictures, that user's cover picture. Um, uh, people can customize the color of their Twitter profile. So all the information about different color so which they have chosen for different parts of that profile. In case those are other than the default Twitter blue, they would all the hex codes of the color would be marked here. So you get extensive information about uh, the profile of this user itself also with every time you get a tweet about them. And then uh, we get back to some of the meta information about the tweet itself in the end. Uh, there is no structure to how this comes about. JSONs generally don't have a structure of in which order these keys would appear. So in your case these keys can appear in different order but nonetheless you would always have these keys. So after we have looked all the nested information about the user, in the end we have some information about like you know, uh, some geographic information about this specific tweet. This specific tweet was not uh, location coded, however if it was, it would show up here. Uh, number of people who have retweeted this, number of favorite counts. Now of course retweet count and favorite count is a uh, temporal thing, so you would get the information of at the point of data collection. So that may not be always true. So if you collect information about this tweet today, uh, it would say the retweet count is 3. But of course, if somebody retweets it tomorrow, that count would not be have here. So uh, if this data should be collected when you need it and or essentially at the 
time where you want to do the analysis okay uh, and then the retweeted or favorited uh, false means that does the user who created the tweet has uh, did this in terms of a retweet okay uh, so for example if there is some tweet and i retweet it that also the retweet shows up as one of the tweets i've done because i've uh, so this flag would show that is this a retweet or not okay and then finally uh, we have a flag called language uh, twitter would try to identify the language in which this tweet is written uh, they try to identify over 100 languages uh, they have different markers of what they can identify and they would mark it with a iso code in this case en which is english uh, this doesn't work for cannot may not work for very difficult code mix samples or very obscure languages but they have a wide array of languages which they identify okay uh, with this uh, we wrap up our first tutorial in which we looked at how to access the twitter api in a python code what is tweepy and how can you get uh, get information about your first ever tweet using the twitter api